Hello and welcome to this download from Blackwell Online. My name is George Miller, and my guest is Colin Brown, author of A Secret History of Whitehall. Colin is better placed than most to tell this story, having spent over 30 years as a Westminster correspondent. His book, Whitehall, The Street That Shapes a Nation, looks at the long history of one street, its buildings, from royal tennis courts to secret bunkers, and the people who have shaped it, from Henry VIII to Gordon Brown. Given the wealth of material available, I asked Colin how he had set about tackling his subject. I approached it uh, as if I was writing a biography about the street, and therefore I went chronologically through the centuries, um, layer by layer. I started actually with Edward I, and uh, the point being that uh, Whitehall has been an important thoroughfare through London for a thousand years. You can still find the structure of the old road that predated Whitehall. Uh, you can date Whitehall as a name very uh, accurately, really, because um, round about 1530, the former ecclesiastical palace owned by Cardinal Wolsey in the church was seized by Henry VIII. It was renamed then, and uh, this is one of the things that I confronted very few people have got a, a firm idea as to why it's called Whitehall. Architectural experts say that it's because a place of festivities used to be called the Whitehall. And there was a very large hall in the uh, Royal Palace. But I think, uh, because I come from a political background, it was done for political purposes. And uh, in his play, Henry VIII, Shakespeare seized on this, in which he's got two characters in the play saying, you must no longer call this York Place, its previous name, uh, when it was owned by the church, you must call it Whitehall. And I think that Henry VIII was stamping a new name on the place because he wanted to erase the memory of Wolsey. Yeah, uh, Henry VIII looms very large in the, in the early part of the book and emphasises the fact that thanks to him, it was really a, a centre for royal power, and that was, that was its significance for many centuries until, I think, William and Mary came along. Say something about the, the Tudor palace that, um, that Henry had and its sort of significance in, in, his, in his sort of court life. The most striking thing was the way that uh, the palace operated alongside the Thames. When Wolsey owned York Place, he had a, a long corridor built, and he was able to look up over the Thames and uh, look inwardly over some gardens and it was a place that he would walk along and he'd show off some of the uh, fine tapestries and he would have meetings in, in this long corridor or gallery and uh, one of the experts says that at the time it was really the height of fashion but when Henry took over the palace he did something very significant which was he built a privy gallery at right angles to the uh, river so that it ran inland and he did that for a very good reason he decided that he would build his palace right across the main thoroughfare of Whitehall but on the uh, westward side he would develop an enormous sports complex it would be the sort of thing that footballers today would want it had everything that he enjoyed at the time by way of sports. It, it had four indoor tennis courts, it had a tilt yard, it had a cockpit and an indoor bowling alley. But even Henry couldn't divert the road, so what he did is he built the Privy Gallery through a footbridge and a gateway, and that became known as the Holbein Gate. And so he was able to walk from the riverside right over to his indoor tennis courts without getting his feet in the mud of the road or meeting ordinary people. I was astonished to find there were parts of the Royal Palace that Henry laid out still standing behind the Portland stone facades of the Cabinet Office. There's a turret there that he would have recognised, which was a corner of one of his indoor tennis courts. and. There is um, a passageway known as Cockpit Passage, which is in use every day to th th these days. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary told me that he walks along it every day because there's a secret way into uh, the side of number 10. You mentioned secrets, and 
that's one of the themes that runs through the book, this, this idea that there are lots of secret, hidden interconnections between different buildings, different parts of Whitehall. And there are all sorts of rumours about bunkers and whole sort of underground networks of tunnels and so on. And so you've been able to sort of investigate that to, to, to some extent, haven't you? I've interviewed people with secrets clearance who uh, were able to tell me something about the underground nature of Whitehall. I don't think it's true that the Prime Minister could walk to the House of Commons in tunnels, but there are communications tunnels under the main thoroughfare of Whitehall, and there is an enormous underground nuclear bunker underneath the main defence building. And I spoke to a defence minister who described being sent down there by officials at the Ministry of Defence, by defence chiefs. And when he got there, he, he said, but why are we here? And th this defence chief said, because somebody has to run the country, even after a nuclear strike. And he said, well, I'd rather it wasn't me. And he refused to co cooperate with them. Now... There are other bunkers as well. There's um, an enormous building at the back of uh, the, the Admiralty building. And I understand a very large underground bunker um, is, is placed there, which is convenient for Whitehall and also the royal family in Buckingham Palace. And there's a tunnel which runs nearly three miles under London as far as the new Home Office building. And it goes right under uh, the QE2 centre. And some years ago, I stumbled across it when the QE2 centre was being built. I went to what I thought was a, a lift taking me up from a car park. In fact, the lift went down. Mm. And I was met by a very startled officer. And one of the other extraordinary things that I found is that Woolsey's wine cellar is still in the basement just as he left it underneath the Ministry of Defence main building. So you've got a nu nuclear bunker one side and Woolsey's wine cellar on the other.